Hello, God bless you and welcome to another episode of the Bible says this, what say you? Psalms 33 and verse four, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr., pastor of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and I'm glad to be talking to you today. Now, my friends, I, I want to talk to you about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, and I want to talk to you about uh, uh, a status that we all have. We, for those of us who are saved, who are watching this, and you've been washing the blood, all of us have been saved from sin. We've all been brought out of something. N not one of us was born righteous, born, uh, born again, born free from sin. But we were uh, uh, shapen, uh, uh, formed in sin and shaped in iniquity. And, and look at what the Lord did. The Lord saved us and brought us out. Now, the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Which is a question. He says, Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And he says, Be not deceived, neither fornicators. Fornicators here is immoral persons, people who, who practice uh, uh, sexual activity outside of the bonds of marriage. It says neither fornicators nor idolaters. Idolaters are people who worship and serve a God, a, a God or other gods. They put their careers and everything else uh, ahead of the God of the Bible and their relationship with the Lord. Idolaters nor adulterers. An adulterer is someone who have sex with uh, a person that they are not married to and they themselves are indeed married. Nor uh, adulterers, adulterers, nor fornicators. And then it says this, nor effeminate. The effeminate has to do with even men who are effeminate. Men who are feminine in their actions. As a matter of fact, uh, the effeminate actually references in, 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 some, in, in many ways those men who behave like women. They themselves may or may not be practicing homosexuals, but they are effeminate. So brothers, I'm telling you now, you got to get that, got to get that wrist action right. Uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Now, abusers of themselves with mankind deals with the uh, homosexuality. Homosexuality is abuse of the human body. A man was not made to have sexual relations with another man. Neither was a woman made to have sexual relations with another woman. Paul teaches that nature teaches you uh, that, that that is true. And just by the physical design of the human body, we all know that that is the case. Whether you are male or female, the male was made to uh, come together uh, with the female and the, and the female was made to come together with the male. And, and, and that's, that's a no brainer. But he goes on to say, nor thieves, nor covetous nor drunkards, the covetous are people who long for things that belong to someone else. The thieves are self-explanatory, nor drunkards, nor revilers, that is the partiers, the drinkers, the, the revelers, the fighters, uh, nor extortioners, people who are in business, who overcharge people, uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Then Paul says this, he says, and such were some of you. Such were all of us, but now you are washed. Washed there signifies be, uh, being cleansed from sin because of salvation. And you are sanctified. Sanctified literally means living a life that is set apart for holiness, set apart uh, to the God of the Bible that, that we may be his instruments and be used by him. And you are justified. Justified literally means that we've been made righteous by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It says you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. All of us are ex. 
<laughs> Amen. We were ex-liars, ex-drug dealers, ex-adulterers, ex-fornicators, ex-homosexuals, ex, ex, ex. Now, it's interesting that I would mention ex-homosexuals uh, uh, because one of the things that's happening uh, in, the, uh, in America and around the world today, we're trying to, we're trying to remove the ex from LGBTQ and trying to teach people that, that you can live in this lifestyle, or should I say death style, that you can continue on in it, live that way, and still be saved. That you can, you can be, I heard someone the other day describe themselves as a Christian homosexual, well, they said Christian gay person, uh, and, and the person is married to a person of the same sex, and they, they claim Christianity. Well, my friends, you can't do that. Paul says such were some of you. Such words. You, you, we, we can't, you can't be a Christian and still cheat people in business. Such words, some of you. You know, when you get saved, the, the Lord sanctifies us. He brings us out of those old habits. Now, it's a process. You know, we grow in grace. And, and as we learn to do better, as we learn better, we do better. The, the moment you, you accept Jesus Christ, you're washed from your sins right then. But, but now we got to learn how to live it in a practical way and walk out this life. And one of the things that, that we learned in times past was that you had to come out of sin. Well, today, when you tell people to come out of sin, you're accused of being judgmental. We're, we're accused of being mean. We're accused of being bigots. Well, I'm here to say that to the utmost, Jesus saves. And Jesus brings us out of sin. And when you meet the Lord Jesus, he will clean, clean you up. He'll bring you out and you will be uh, in the group just like the rest of us. We were those things. We used to do those things. But thank God, by the blood of Jesus, we do not do those things anymore. Now. In this session, uh, and, and for the next session, uh, and perhaps for the third session, I have a very, 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 very special guest that I want to bring before you. This young man wants to share his story. Now, all of us have been delivered from things that, you know, there are things in our lives that we would, we would much rather just leave them where they are. The Lord has forgiven us, uh, uh, washed, covered them in his blood, and never to be mentioned again. And we say, thank the Lord, and we leave it there. And yet there are others who say, well, there are some things about uh, my deliverance that I want to share. I was talking to a lady the other day, and she was sharing with me how she was abused as a child. And after being abused as a, as a child, as she became an adult, uh, she, had, she had an abortion. She got pregnant, had an abortion. She got pregnant again and had another abortion. She was in a, uh, uh, an abusive relationship with a man, and then she met Jesus. And when she met Jesus, oh, the Lord led her to the man of her dreams and the Lord cleansed her, cleaned her up. She's sweetly saved. I tell you, to look at the lady, you wouldn't think she's ever, she ever had a cold, much less had such a, a, a terrible past. But Jesus sweetly saved her and she's writing a book and she wants to share her story. I was reading the book, a book from another lady the other day who shared the story of how she was abused as a child and how the Lord brought her to be the woman of God that she is today. Well, today I have special guests who will say that, uh, yes, I walked on the other side. I walked in, into the lifestyle of the, uh, the LGBT. I was, I was out there, but the Lord saved me. The Lord brought me back. The Lord brought me out. And, uh, this man of God wants to share his story, not for any kind of a sensationalism, but we, we're not getting ready to have an interview and, and call names or, or shed a negative light on anyone else. I'm a big believer in the scriptures. The scriptures only give us, the scriptures only give you permission to confess your sins. You know, you can't confess someone else's. So this is not about to be a gossip session where we can learn some kind of uh, some kind of dirt on someone else. No, we don't waste uh, time before you would anything like that. But it is a story of redemption. It is a story 
of a life gone sadly wrong only to be brought back by the blood of Jesus. It is a story that reflects a, a different side, if you will, even of the upper room ministry because people assume that because we preach against sin that we hate sinners or you know uh, someone said this to me one time a guy said you know uh, bishop would not love you well at the time he said pastor would not love you man i said well brother thank you he said because man i tell you i tell you man you you don't give them homosexuals a chance and man you can't stand uh homosexuals and man i really appreciate that about your ministry and i said sir uh, have I given you that impression? And if I have, I, I owe you an apology because that's not my position on people uh, in the homosexual lifestyle at all. I love homosexuals. Jesus died for homosexuals. Jesus died for everybody. We love everyone. I preach the way that I do. I preach as vehemently as I do because I want men to be delivered. I want men to be saved. People have said to me, Brother Wooden, you preach a lot against homosexuality, but that's not the only sin. Well, at the time, it was the only sin that we were trying to make legal. In the last eight years, there has been a, we, America has legislated and legalized immorality. And I want you to know, my friends, that the Supreme Court, the previous president, Many other elected officials, they may have had power to make it legal, but they do not and will never have power to make it right. Whatever God says a thing is, that is what it is. And when the Lord declares a thing to be sin, I don't care what I say, you say, or anyone else. When God says it's sin, guess what? It's sin. So today in my next seg uh, segment, I'm going to bring a brave man of God to you who came back to our church, I think he'll tell you, maybe 18 years ago. And, and when he returned, uh, he wasn't in, uh, at his best. Uh, I, I think that he returned uh, to die. But he didn't find rejection at the upper room. He found open arms of, of the saints, of yours truly, and 18 to 20 years later, he's alive and well, preaching the word of God, serving here at the church, and we love him here at the upper room. And he has said to me on more than one occasion, Bishop Wooden, I want to share my story. I want to tell where the Lord brought me from. And this man can say without any shadow of a doubt, yes, I'm in the category of uh, such were some of you. Yes, I once was. What did uh, John Knox say? I once was lost, but now I'm found. Found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. My friends, I am the beneficiary of the grace of God. <laughs> And so are you. And isn't it wonderful that we serve a God who is gracious and no matter how low you may go in sin, my friends, the Bible says where sin doth abound, grace doth much more abound. You can't sin above God's ability to forgive you. You can't go so far that the Lord won't forgive you if you confess your sins. Now, I'm not talking about the consequences of actions. That's a different story altogether. But I'm telling you that our Lord loves us and he died for every one of us and he wants us all to be saved. Now I'm going to come back and said bit two. I went over the time that was allotted to me. Uh, my director may get on me, but uh, this is the first segment of the Bible says this. What say 